Apple has officially released to iOS 16.4. And so in this video, we're gonna go over what's new in iOS 16.4. Starting off with everyone's favorite, new emojis. There are 21 new emojis in all, and some of these include shaking head, ginger, pink, blue, and gray hearts, a donkey, a moose, jellyfish, a comb, and more. Websites that are now added to the home screen on an iPhone or iPad as a web app can now send web app push notifications in iOS 16.4 and again in iPadOS 16.4, just like you would on the Mac. This is a feature that Apple first announced at WWDC with the introduction of iOS 16, and it is now starting to roll out. Web apps added to a user's home screen can request permission to receive push notifications through a subscribe button or another similar direct interaction. Notifications for home screen web apps can also be incorporated into Focus, so they can be rolled into daily summaries, and there are options for configuring where and how to receive the web notifications. And also, badges for those web apps will appear on your home screen as well. Speaking of adding websites to your home screen, you can also do that now via a third-party web browser like Chrome. With iOS 16.4 and iPadOS 16.4, those who are enrolled in Apple's developer program are able to turn on developer betas directly from the software update section in the settings app. This will actually eliminate those pesky profile installs that you have to do via the developer center in order to get developer betas. So it simplifies the whole downloading process. There's also an option for public beta testers as well who want to install updates with a lot less hassle. The traditional page turning animation that has been around since the early days of the Books app is now back after it was removed recently, a move which upset quite a few hardcore Apple Books users. Apple made several updates to the podcast app, so channels access is available in the library section, and Up Now now lets you resume episodes, start saved episodes, and remove episodes that you might want to skip. For CarPlay, there's now an option to pick up where you left off on a podcast with Up Next or find new podcast options in Browse. In Apple Music, there is now a prominent button for accessing your profile and it makes it easier than ever to get to your profile settings. In the settings app, there's an updated coverage interface that shows you the warranty information of your iPhone and connected devices like Apple Watches and AirPods. There are options in shortcuts for creating workflows that lock a device's screen and control the always-on display. Plus, there is an option to automatically enable or disable Stage Manager on the iPad. Apple has also added an option to have Siri announce notifications as an action that can be incorporated into a shortcut. The always-on display toggle, this is very minor, but it's moved to a slightly different location, now being underneath the show wallpaper and show notification setting. When you make a call, you can now turn on voice isolation to cut down on background noise. Voice isolation was previously available for FaceTime and some other services, and now it makes a big difference in regular call quality uh, when you're just making a standard phone call. The option to remove duplicate photos that Apple introduced in iOS 16 has been expanded to the iCloud shared photo library in iOS 16.4. So if you have an iCloud shared photo library and there are duplicate photos uploaded by multiple people, you can go to the utilities album and choose the duplicates option to go ahead and merge them. There are even more minor tweaks and fixes that we just didn't have time to include in this video or were just kind of too minor. But if you want to see a full list of that, you can check out the guide linked in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.